Blessings to you from Korea. Today's message is that two essential things that we as Christians are supposed to do as we wait for the presence of God. We all wait for the presence of God fully manifested in our lives. The passage we're going to look at is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. In the opening verses of Mark, Mark's gospel, the gospel of Mark, we find a powerful call to action. These verses set the stage for the coming of the Messiah, the presence of God, fully manifested at the time, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark references the, wor the words of prophet Isaiah pointing to two critical actions. Okay, so there are two critical actions that were prophesied to be done, to be conducted before the coming, the, before the coming of the presence of Jesus Christ, like fully manifested, preparing the way of the Lord and making his path straight for God to kick in. There are two things that we got to do as Christians. Uh, today we will focus on these two things, the actions that we are told to take into account to prepare ourselves and others for the coming of the Lord in our lives and in the world. The first thing that we are called to do as Christians is to prepare the way of the Lord to get ourselves and others for being exposed to the presence of God, Emmanuel, God among us. Not in theory, but in power, because the kingdom of God is not in theory, but in power. The first thing that we are called to do is to prepare the way of the Lord. How do we prepare the way of the Lord? In order to get the answer to this question, we need to pay attention to what John the Baptist do because he was the very one that was prophesied to prepare the way for the Messiah. The imagery in Mark chapter 1, 3 comes from Isaiah 40, 43, where the prophet, prophet declares that there will be a voice crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord for, the, for God's coming. It's a voice crying in the wilderness, right? And then the wilderness is symbolic of the bro brokenness, sin, spiritual desolation of the world. And here is a profound lesson. lesson like to be exposed right to be exposed to the presence of God in order for us for us to be exposed to the presence of God Christ has to come God has to come into our lives and here in order for in order for God to be exposed uh, in order for us to be exposed to God and God should be exposed, the presence of God should be exposed to our lives. It was prophesied, the coming of the Messiah, to prepare, preparing the way of the Lord precedes, precedes, right? Precedes the exposer. So what it means to Prepare the way of the Lord. How do we prepare the way of the Lord? What did he do? So in order to get the answer, we need to know, look at what, we need to pay attention, what the John the Baptist, okay? What John the Baptist did, because he was the very one, he was the very person, he was the very prophet who was called to prepare, uh, prepare the way of the Lord. What was his central message? Repentance was his central message. Actually, repentance was the key message that John the Baptist pre preached. Actually, that was the only message that he preached. He preached over and over and over again. When he prepared the way for the Lord, he preached the message, repent. 
So in order to get the answer of this question, you need to pay attention to what John the Baptist do because he was the very one that was prophesied to prepare the way for the Lord and he preached, repent, the kingdom of God has come. So doing all things but repenting your sins cannot be considered as preparing the way for the presence of God coming into your life. In order, to, in order for you to be exposed to the presence of God, in order to prepare the way for the Lord, way of the Lord, you need to repent. Okay? And the second thing, making his path straight. The second thing that we can apply into our lives in order to prepare our, ourselves for enjoying the presence of God in our daily lives is to make his path straight. This is another, another metaphor that speaks to our role in preparing for Christ's coming both personally and collectively. So in order to get the clear concept of this passage, it would be really helpful to picture a highway. Okay, this is highway. Make paths straight. Just as a highway needs to be clear of debris and obstacles to make the journey smooth, and the car is coming, you know, the Christ is coming, this is the pass. If there, there, is some, there, if there are some obstacles and debris, this, right, the coming of Christ can be blocked. So, just as a highway needs to be clear of debris and obstacles to make the journey smooth, our hearts and lives need to be cleared of the things that hinder our relationship with God. These obstacles can be sin, can be selfishness, like self-centeredness or tendency to be self-centered, or pride, or anything, okay? Can be really something negative or something positive that looks so good and desirable in our eyes, okay? Anything that looks so good and, and desirable and desirable. This is kind of familiar, right? This is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Looks so desirable, good and desirable, but keep us from fully following Christ. A better job opportunity maybe? attractive person that you can hang out with maybe, but that keeps you from blocking. I mean, keeps you from enjoying the presence of God. Keeps you from uh, following Christ. As Christians, we are called to identify these barriers and remove them so that Christ, God's will can be done in us. Again, this is directly related to the concept of repentance. What is repentance? Repentance means turning away okay repentance means turning away not only just you know confessing your sins like moral sins you know something something that you did wrong to others but also anything that turning away from anything that probably something like anything that looks so good and desirable but anything that turns you away, turns you away from God. Why? Because God is the only one worthy to be praised in our lives. As we are preparing our hearts for Christ, are we actually repenting? That I want to, as we reflect on these two essential actions, preparing the way of the Lord and making His path straight, let us ask ourselves some personal, just really important questions. Are we preparing our hearts for Christ? Are we actively repenting, clearing away any obstacle that keeps us from God? The good news is that Jesus, the Son of God, has come, and He's coming again. I'm not just talking about, I'm not just talking about the second coming. I'm, I'm talking about the coming of Jesus Christ into your life, the presence of God fully manifested in your life. In the meantime, we have a par part to play in preparing the world for his return. As Christians, we are called to be both, both, both faithful followers and faithful messengers preparing the way and making his path straight for ourselves and for others. Let us take this call ser seriously. Let us be the voices crying in the wilderness of our, of our generation, preparing the way for the, 
the coming of the Lord, and let us make His path straight and removing the barriers that prevent us from experience, experiencing the fullness of His presence and helping others to do the same. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You for sending Your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save us. Help us, help us to remove the obstacles that block Your presence and give us the strength to live lives that make Your path straight. May our words and actions draw others closer to you, and may we be faithful in proclaiming the good news of Christ's coming. In Jesus' name we pray.